welcome to Football Manager 16 with me, GW365. Hope you are all well. I'm going to start a new career game. Um, it's been a little while coming out this game, basically. I've been wanting to do this for a while, basically. Uh, we're going to go to the full feature simulation experience. So we're going to load the, ga the game database. Uh, I've had a few plays around with tactics and things. Um, I've tried some of my own. I've tried some of others. Uh, other people's if you like. Uh, I'm probably going to use someone else's on this one with a few tweaks. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get into the game. It's fun around the north and south time. Yeah, we're going to start at the bottom um, and no better when it eventually loads. Uh, we'll start the game. I've got like uh, all players from like based in the um, in Europe and I think South America. I think. Although I'm not sure how true that is, but uh, I haven't gone into I ain't gone, in, gone into individual countries because uh, it's quite simple. It takes ages to go through them all. Uh, so this is going to take a little while. Uh, I will. Mm, I'll just continue saying what I'm going to do. Basically, I'm going to go for the bottom team in the in the division, um, which is going to be Curzon Ashton. And by I say division, I mean uh, the Vanara Vanarama North League. Uh, National League North, should I say. Vanarama National League North, that's what it is. It's a bit of a mouthful, that's what she said. But, um, yeah, I, I'm going to opt for North because it's from it's where I'm from. I'm from up north. I'm, I could easily go for South, but I prefer to stay in the northern area. I don't know why, it's just a personal preference of mine. Uh, so that is what I'm doing. I am going to be Curzon Ashton because they are predicted to finish 22nd in the league. Um, and it looks like we're going to be able to select it very shortly. Uh, and oh, can look at me. So this is m myself. I've got some Welsh in me, so that's why I've got Welsh as a, as a second nationality. Place of birth, something like that, Osset. Um, this is what I've got here. Motivating is 20, because I think motivation is key on any tactic. It's not just about a tactic anymore. You need to be good at uh, get gene your players up, basically. You've got to do it. So we're going to go for that. I'm not really bothered about what I'm wearing. Uh, we are going to go into England, and we're going to go to Vanarama North South. We're going to go to the North, and we're going to go straight for Curzon Ashton, which I believe is in like the Lancashire area near Rochdale, so to speak. Um, overview, club background. Excuse me. Semi-professional club currently playing in Vanarama uh, National in the League North. Curzon Ashton put their place in Vanarama North. I can't even speak. Vanarama North by winning promotion from the Northern Premier Premier last season, which is pretty good. They play at the Thames Side Stadium uh, and possess below average training facilities. Blah 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 blah. It doesn't tell us exactly where they are, but I'm, I'm, I think I had a look uh, the other day, and I believe they are in um, like the Rochdale Oldham sort of area, somewhere around there. Correct, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the nickname I believe is the Nash. So we'll see. So it's a Thameside Stadium. We're going to add the manager there, and then we're just going to get into the man managerial style. I'm not going to alter this. This is what I prefer to have, uh, and then we're going to confirm. Adaptability just means uh, going like abroad. If we go over here. It says affects the chances of a manager finding employment in a foreign league. Don't really care about that, so we're going to leave it at one. Uh, same as goalkeepers. Uh, I've never seen a goalkeeper, so I'm just going to stick with that. Confirm it. Um, we'll start playing. It'll load a little bit. When we get into it, I'll uh, basically just highlight like the, the strengths and weaknesses and things like that. Um, tactic testing. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. So we're going to go for LP. Um, Curzon. Ashton. I think it's somewhere near Ashton under Lime. I'm not sure. But that, that's in near Manchester. It's on the edge of, on the outskirts of Manchester. Which, I'm not from Manchester. I'm from the other side of the Pennines, but uh, we'll go for that. Just because it's purely because of the the uh, team um, predicted to finish 22nd. I should have checked that out, really, if I'm honest with you. But uh, never mind. So I'm going to just quickly have a look at the the squad itself. Um, I've already had a look already, like to some degree, at a few of the players that it looks like they're going to need to to do. Have I picked the wrong team? I picked the wrong team, haven't I? No, I haven't. Yes, I have. I picked the wrong, wrong team. <laughs> you idiot. Lal. Um, who are we? Oh, I picked AFC Fielder. I didn't mean to pick them. So, uh, yeah, let's just... Uh, 
I'm going to cut it there, and I'm going to pick Kez and Ashton, and then you'll see what happens. And we are back. This is what I meant to do. It's because I didn't click on that little bullet point thing there. Kez and Ashton predicted to finish 22nd. Uh, estimated value is 180k. Uh, the Nash is the nickname of them, which is what I thought it was. Stadium capacity is 4,500. Is seated. Um, yeah, so we're going to go into that. Managerial style, we've already seen this. Confirm. I'll save over that last one. We'll start playing. It'll ask us to save. And we'll go over that one because uh, I accidentally put the wrong team. So I'm saving this time, and this time I will be able to uh, tell you exactly what's going on because I can't believe it. Um, if I, if you did watch the Minecraft videos, by the way, I, I've rectified the situation now with the lights. So uh, hopefully I've got a little bit of time left over to try and get some recording done. Um, but yeah, we've got. Um, this is me getting hired. Got a personal message. Blah 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 blah. I won't go too much into this. I'm just going to go into this into the squad. And basically, this is the team. And the first thing you're probably thinking is, how many defend uh, centre defenders do you need? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the first team alone, and half of the players are on non-contracts. There is a reason for this. Uh, well, so well, there is a massive reason for it. If I go to the board, we have got. We are only allowed £1,799 on a weird budget, which is next to nothing. If you compare it to, say, I think it's Harrogate, who get about 3000 or maybe about two and a half. It's like the quality of player is less because you can't, well, you can't get them on a part-time contract. So as a result, we've got two players in particular that stand out. There's Matthew Flynn, who's on £200 a week, and then there's uh, Dieter Downey, who, believe it or not, with a name like Dieter, is English. Uh, he might have um, some German in him, but apparently not. Doesn't, no one knows where he was born. So maybe if uh, Dieter Down is watching, maybe he can enlighten us. Probably not, though. So yeah, we've got Matthew Flynn on £200 a week. Then we've got Dieter Down, who's our best player. Well, effectively, he's going to be the best player. Um, he is um, on £100 a week. And there's another player, I believe, on 150 that's him, Ryan Brook, he's a striker. Uh, Gary Burnett is another one, he's on £150. Matthew Warburton, 100 John and Wright is on £30, which is nothing really. Shelton Payne is on £150, that's fairly expensive. Alex Brown, again, 150 John Hunt, £90, again, I, I don't mind paying that. Hacken Burton's on £100. Uh, Alex Frost here on £100. So it's a case of trying to get rid of as many people as possible, really, uh, to try and get that make it so we can get other players in that are of better quality. So we will be looking at certain areas. Um, if we look at the team report here, um, I have no assistant manager, I'm assuming. I have no assistant manager. Uh, where's the best place to look at? We'll look at this. I've got one coach, which apparently is me. That's not very good. Um, let's go to training. Um, coaches. Yeah, oh, there's me and one other guy. The under-21s coach. So that's something we're going to have to look into as well. So that's more money we're going to be spending on wages. Which is, the sh which is shocking, really. Uh, if I go to scouting. Let's just click on a man here. Let's have a look. Unavailable scout summary because we can't scout anyone. We have no scouts. So that's something else as well. Uh, so, yeah. Um... What I'm going to do is look, well, we'll quickly again, we've looked at the strength of the players. Um, the best player is probably Dieter Downey. The best defender is Matthew Flynn at the moment. If I, I wanted to show you a quicker way of doing it. In fact, there is. Reports. That's the best way of doing it. If I go to ability, the best players, you've got Dieter Downey, Ben Atkinson, Liam Thompson, uh, Matthew Flynn, best defender, right back, Simon Woodford. Don't look bad. Apparently he's a right-back though, I thought he was a centre-back, but it looks like he could do a job. But Shelton Payne, who was three and a half star as well, and then Hakan Burton, probably their goalkeeper. We've got some high potential players uh, in Liam Tonsert, Hakan Burton, uh, Dieter Downey of course, and then a few potentials in Jordan Wright, Ben Atkinson and Cameron Mason, who was a goalkeeper, uh, who was probably going to be second string, I would have thought. But yeah, there's some high potential players here. Um, a couple of low potential ones, which we'll probably try to get rid of where we can. We'll have to see. 
So I'm going to call, not call it a video, I'm going to cut it here. I'm going to come back when I've sorted out my tactics and everything else. I'm going to, probably going to play all the friendlies as well. One thing I'm going to do is, with the tactics, I'm going to set up the tactics and I'm going to rearrange a load of friendlies, cancel them all, and then, uh, sorry, cancel the existing friendlies, set them up so I've got to get a friendly three every three days. There'll be about 10, 11 friendlies, just to try and boost the tactics uh, fluidity up. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, and then we'll come back. So hopefully you'll join us in a second back and it's been probably a, a, a second for you or two but it's been a couple of days for me a couple of game playing uh, days uh, for me and basically we've got we've changed his tactics we've got, and I'm going to show you them shortly but I'm going to look at the uh, everything I've done basically so I'm going to start with the tactics and you're probably thinking what the bloody hell is that and you might be right but it's sort of like a 4 2 3 1 it's asymmetrical um, the reason for this, I don't know, it's, it's kind of good because they've got the, the fullback here. D don't worry, this is not the starting team. I just used this for the last game. Um, because uh, I wanted to rest the key players that are starting the games for the first game of the season, which is today. Um, we've gone all that way. So, basically we've got a fullback and support, a covering defender and a normal defender. Normal defender can be slow uh, and... Uh, the um, covering defender needs to be quick, which these are the slower defenders that are in the team. Uh, so basically, there's some key things you've got to look for in this particular tactic. This is not my own tactic. It is a tweet version of the Dawnbringer, which is uh, Mr. Yui Rosler, I believe, off this, the Sports Interactive um, forums. So I'm not going to claim uh, his tactic as my own. Uh, I have tweaked it, however, because he has got two ball-winning midfielders, and he does have uh, get stuck in. But you find in the lower leagues that uh, you get a lot of yellow and red cards, so I've knocked it off for that reason. Um, the tactic itself, it started off poorly. Uh, I will show you that shortly when I look at the results in the friendlies. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go into the positions first. So, but to look for the key attributes, he, he always puts on four attributes. And this goes for pretty, pretty much, I think, more or less, if you're just thinking about like defenders and things, it's pretty much straightforward. But for centre-backs, you need uh, positioning, tackling, marking and jumping reach to be decent. Uh, make sure at least one of them is quick, which is what I've done here. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just quickly switch all the players around. So we've got a few new signings as well, which I'll get to shortly. Um, where are we? Uh, Matthew Flynn, if you remember him from earlier, He's, he was going to be the quick one. I did get another one in, another defender, which is Omar Sinclair. Um, we have lost a couple of players as well, which is one of the problems with it, having non-contracts. It means that anyone could come in for him at any point. And that is indeed the case uh, to one player in particular, which I'll come back to shortly, because I can't remember off the top of my head who it is. Uh, Alex Brown is our captain, so he's going to come in as the central midfielder on defend, because he's got like a full... Like piece of pie, if you like pie, full pie. There's a piece missing from that one. Or oh, pizza slice, whatever you want to call them. Uh, Harry Donovan is a player I brought in for it to play attacking mid in the middle. This one here. Crothers came in because of that guy who I just mentioned who went because he was a non contract that that's someone signed. I can't remember. I think it was Namp which signed the player in question. Liam Thompson looks a pretty decent player. He's going to play in the right attacking midfield area. Uh, Shelton Payne looks alright, but Ty Phillips is another signing of mine. As is Andrew Bridges. Uh, Ryan Brook is on the transfer list because I've got Jake Clark, who did pick up a head injury, uh, not the last game, but the game before. Uh, Matthew Warburton is a high potential player. He's definitely in my plans. However, he um, he picked up an injury for like six to seven weeks. He's nearly back, right on the foot, like the second game. So basically what we're looking at here is um, defenders, you've got a covering defender and that's pretty self-explanatory. You've got an attacking fullback that's going to bomb all the way up here, which brings these two into play. These two like sit, well in particular this one they sit, but uh, that's what the idea is why they're on the left as well, because they kind of cover the left hand side while he bombs forward. The right hand side here you've got a round, di round di deuter, you've got two attacking mids and a triquas, I can't even say the thing, triquartista, that's it. Tricor's sister, which means basically he's just going to float around, which um, 
there's a couple of key attributes I'll come on to them shortly. Same with the, the RAM data, I'll go more into detail about him as well. Uh, but there's a reason why it's set up like this. He's going to sit back a lot of the time. He does get forward in occasionally, but not as much as Downey, which is the, the left D to down there, the, the key player, if you remember rightly. Um, right, so going back into the dis the uh, descriptions of what people need. The goalkeeper's self-explanatory, we'll start from the beginning. Uh, Hakan Burton, he's a sweeper-keeper, um, which does scare me. I don't, I'm not overly keen on using sweeper-keepers, because they need to have good rushing out, and his rushing out is only seven. The sub-keeper, Cameron Mason, has got five rushing out, which is even worse for this particular role. So, goalkeeper, he's done all right in the friendlies, so I'm going to keep faith with him so far because of his high potential, mainly. Um, they've both got high potential, but his is more concrete than Cameron Mason because that's got a black start at the end, which is a potential potential, if you know what I mean. So, aerial ability, reflexes, handling, and one-on-ones is the best ones. It's, it's basically put, just just get the best goalkeeper you can. I don't think we need to, because two and a half stars usually all right for this league. Or just for this league, though. He's not the quickest, though, neither. Pace and acceleration is only five. But if we look at his aerial ability, it's 10, which isn't bad. Uh, reflexes is 10. Again, it isn't bad for this league. Handling is 11, which is good, because it's blue. That's the way I've set it. So, one-on-ones is only 7, which kind of is a bit low. But it'll do, I think, for now. Uh, we'll have to see. The left back, which is Dieter Downey, his key attributes are stamina on the right hand side. He's got 11 for that. Work rate, which is 11 for that. Crossing, which is 9. And passing, which is 7. Passing lets him down slightly, but all his other, all his other stats that are important, um, they're, they're adequate for this league. And he's only going to improve because of his uh, potential, I think. He's only 20 years old, so he has got room to improve. And other attributes for all players, really, I'll get this out there now, determination is definitely on my mind. It is, it's a a very good attribute to have, as is teamwork to some degree as well. So then we go to the right back, which is passing, crossing, tackling, and marking. So we've got Kelvin Blow, Blau, what do you call it? Blue, Blow, I don't know how to pronounce it. He doesn't say he's French, he's, he's actually English, but I'm going to guess that it's it's Blow. Um, so basically, you're looking at passing, which has got 8, which isn't bad. Crossing, which is 10, which is good. Uh, tackling is 10 again, which is also good, and marking is 10. So he's a pretty solid right back for this role, and it helps that he's quick as well. He's got 12 pace and acceleration, so that's always good. Um, then the centre backs, we've got positioning, tackling, marking, and jumping reach. So we've got Matthew Flynn, whose positioning is 9, which isn't bad. Tackling is 12, which is good. Uh, marking is 10, which again is good, and jumping reach is 11. He's pretty solid. For this league, Omar Sinclair is a bit quicker, so hence he's the cover one because he's got 11 acceleration and pace. He's actually fairly strong as well with 13 strength. Um, but then looking at his other ones, positioning is 9, which again is okay. Tackling is okay at 9. Marking is okay at 9. And jumping reach is 10, which is just about good. So it's pretty. I thought I think our defense is, is kind of solid. Looking at these these here. It's saying that Kelvin Blow is only two star, but I think he's better than that, and I think that's a pretty solid defence to say that we're the bottom team basically in this league. We're, we're predicted to finish bottom. So then we're going to move on to um, the centre midfielders. Now the key area, the key attributes is acceleration, tackling, work rate, and passing. Now work rate is, is I can understand that is key. Now Ben Atkinson. Acceleration is only 9, so it's not the best. But his tackling is 7, which again isn't the best. But for this level, I don't think it's that bad having a low tackling stat, as long as it's not too low. Uh, but work rate is 13, which is very good. And passing is 9, which is okay for this league again. Um, if you go to Alex Brown, his passing is far better. It's 12. Again, he's not the quickest. He's only got 7 acceleration. Uh, work rate is 11, which is acceptable. And we've already mentioned, oh no, tackling is 10, so he's also very good, which is, you know, it's, it's they're, they're decent in the middle of the park. There is one other player I am planning on playing there, which is a centre-back. He's uh, not quite fit, he's not very fit though for some reason. That's this guy here, Jack Horan, I signed him as well. Um, his passing is, sorry, his acceleration is 11, which is why he's, he's pretty good. Uh, tackling is 9, work rate is 12, and passing is 8. So he's he's got room for improvement, but of course... The key attribute, I think, mainly is work rate. 
I don't know, they, they have to work hard. This this tactic it asks them to, uh, if I quickly look at this, to close down much more. So everyone is going to be working very hard. I'll come on to that again shortly. So moving on to the attacking mids, which are... Yeah, the, all, all he's put down for this is passing, vision, flare and work rate. So if we look at the players we've got, bear in mind what league we're in, we can't get ridiculously good ones. Uh, passing is 10. In fact, this guy can just tell you straight away everything is 10 of those those attributes, which is very good for this league. Uh, Harry Donovan is a guy I brought in. His passing is 12, which is very good. Uh, his vision is only 8, but the fact that he's got a 12 for passing makes up for it. And his work rate is 13 as well, as well as teamwork. And flair is 16. That's pretty good as well. Um, only thing that lets him down, really, if we're going to say anything, is pace is 6, but his acceleration is 11, so it's not that bad. So then we move on to... Our round out, round out, round uh, out, um, This is a guy I brought in, Ty Phillips. Looks only like a, a youth player here, and a, a little performing one at this moment in time. Is is an okay? Got an average rating in the last five games of seven point zero eight, which isn't bad. It's not like Dieter Down is uh, standard of seven point five eight. He's played exceptionally well. As to as Bridges up front, which I'll move on to in a moment. We've got acceleration. Uh, off the ball, dribbling and finishing. Now if you look at the dribbling, dribbling's only 8, but it's probably acceptable just about for this league. Uh, and finishing is 7. Uh, off the ball is only 8, but pace and acceleration, which is tied in together, is both 12, which is what we're looking for. I need some quick. Um, basically he's described a round out uh, as basically a wide, what did he call it? A wide poacher? Where's it gone? Put it on somewhere. A wide, he operates as a wide striker, basically. He describes it as um, a wide poacher. He's often on the shoulder of the fullback, looking for the ball into space. Looking for the ball, I'm looking, looking to find the ball. I don't know. What, I think it's a bit of a typo there. I don't know. But anyway, he fits the bill, as does the existing player, Shelton Payne. However, Shelton Payne's uh, work rate, I like work rate, and his work rate is not that high. Although it's not a necessity. He's got acceleration off the ball. In fact, he's probably better overall. His finishing is, is 9, which is slightly better it's by 2. Um, but that work rate, I like the work rate. But never mind. So then, we move on to the striking role. Andrew Bridges has, has excelled so far. Um, he's a tricorcister. He's the way he describes it. Our man roams around the pitch seeking space, literally from touchline to touchline, making it nearly impossible to pick him up. I think Trex are misunderstood and seen as a kind of maverick, luxury player. Nothing can be further from the truth. They work very hard running our opponent's back line, never giving them, giving them a moment's peace, pulling defenders out of position, creating space for themselves and others. They can be truly devastating and in my opinion, or in, in Mr. Hugh Rosler's opinion, are the best attacking mind in stri striking role. You might be surprised to find work rate on the preferred attributes. Trust me on this one. Which is what start, made me start thinking about work rate. Now it's only 12, but that's adequate for this this level. His stamina lets him down slightly with 8, because I'm obviously working hard, his stamina's going to uh, be affected. Uh, teamwork is high, off the ball is high as well. Uh, now the what he's got down for the is work rate, off the ball, composure and finishing. Now finishing is 8, which lets him down slightly, but he's been banging him in. If I go on to it here, look at the... Uh, he's got 9 goals in 8 appearances, albeit against poor position, uh, which I will go into now. We're going to go into the uh, schedule. This is a bit of a long drawn out video, I apologise. Uh, but yeah, you can see here the first game we barely beat our reserves 3-2, which was a bit of a shock. Um, but we didn't have many players in key positions filled. Um, I'll come into that shortly as well. Then we lost 1-0 to Hyde, which was making me think, hmm, it's a bit dodgy this. And we did get slightly... It was an even game that we were unlucky to lose really, because it really a, a draw would have been a fair result. But look at all these zeros. Albeit against poor teams, we did concede in the last game. Uh, away at Buckley, but um, yeah, six 0 in particular was very impressive. A couple of long range efforts that went in straight into the top corner, very good. Um, and this is in, in no turn thanks to some transfers. Uh, I'll just mention, actually first, we did get get an assistant manager, which is Graham Hyde. He's on two hundred pound a week though. All this is, is not that good, but it was more, I needed someone. I needed someone to help us out, because uh, regarding, I didn't even, in the tactic screen, I didn't even have these pizza slices, which was a shame. So, going on to the transfers. Transfer history. 
These are all on non-contracts. So we've got Harry Donovan, going back into him. He used to play for Nuneaton. Got him for a free transfer. These are all free. They weren't playing for anyone else, I don't think, uh, at the time. He might have been at Nuneaton, actually, Harry Donovan. But never mind. I took a gamble. He's on £65 an appearance, uh, I think. I can't remember all of them. Jake Clark was the next one that I got. Uh, I got him before... Uh, Bridges. He's done okay. He's got four goals in six substitute appearances. He's been coming off the bench about on the hour mark. Uh, and he's got four goals and one assist, which I can't really complain. He's a good backup striker. His pace isn't amazing, but his acceleration makes up for it. And we're looking again. It's got the it's the truck horse twister, whatever you want to call it. Off the ball is very high. Work rate's for, well, it's not very high. It's high. Work rate's high. Composure's nine and finishing's uh, 12 as well, which is very good. Uh, he's a very good backup striker, which is why he was preferred to the original guy. Uh, Kevin Blow, I got him. He used to play for Staley Bridge and Osset Town, which is a local team. Uh, but he started off at Bradford City, former Bradford City trainee. Uh, Jake Clark did the same where he was from, Macclesfield. So he didn't break through there, so he's going to make a breakthrough for us. Ty Phillips used to play for Peterborough, so that's a, a decent signing in my eyes. Because uh, Peterborough, they've, they've had some good uh, young players come through. Um, well, I say good players. They the, the bought them from like lower league. Like they had like the likes of Craig McHale Smith at one point and George Boyd. But I remember they played for like Gravesend or someone. Well, no, George Boyd did. Andrew Bridges got released from Hartlepool, uh, and he's a free is a free agent right at the beginning, and he's the one who's been leading the line for us, doing well. Uh, Omar Sinclair from Rochdale, and he's done uh, been doing okay for us, and Jack Horan as well. All decent potential players. Right. Anything else? These players have bought them because I think that's where we were lacking most in areas. Uh, we've still got a lot of players. Um, that's something that is going to be a pain in the ass. Now, into the game. I'm going to have to pick my team. We're playing Corby at home. Uh, Corby, not a renowned like top team, but... Uh, we're not exactly a top team either, so this could be a decent game. It could be a, a bad game. We could we could st go like off off the chain, or we could find ourselves struggling and ending up, you know, starting off at the bottom of the league, which is not what we want. We want to start off very well. Connor Hompson is going to be needed, even though he's not the best. His pace is only seven, um, but he, again, he's got a decent potential. But it's just if Downey gets a little bit tired. Uh, Jake Clark is definitely on my on my list of uh, potential replacements, and I think Matthew Crothers. As much as I don't really want to pick him, I'd rather pick Jack Horan because he's yeah. Well, uh, you know what, Simon Lakeland, he's not too bad actually. I'll pick him instead. So we're going to go into the game. Uh, this team. Ooh, why is Omar Sinclair? Is he playing for someone else or something? It's like he's playing for the the reserves or something. What's he doing? So that means I can't play with him in the team. Available for... Moved to senior school. He's been playing for the second team. And so has... Uh, it looks like so has... Where's he gone? Where have you gone? Am I going mad? Where's... Uh, Horan or whatever he's called? Have I put him in the team? Let me go to the under-21s. There is Jack Horan. Get him in the senior squad. He should not be playing in that team. Got a few decent backups as well, just in case that we we'll lose some players. Tactics. Apologies for this. So we're going to get it straight into this one in shortly. But yeah, I think they've both been playing in the second team, and that's why. In the under-21s, that's why they're always so tired. So that means, unfortunately, Omar St. Clair is going to have to swap with Matthew Flynn, and he's going to swap for... Another player's played quite a few games, to be fair. Jack John Hunt. Not Jack Hunt. He plays for... I can't remember where he plays for. He used to play for Huddersfield Town, Forest, um, Brighton, I'm not sure. I can't be asked typing his name in. It's been a long-ass video, this. So we're going to get straight into this one now and actually play a game. So this is going to be an interesting game. The first game, not, sure, not entirely sure how it's going to go. I've only played against lesser teams. Uh, we have dominated to some degree. Um, so we, we shall see what happens. Uh, I do have a, a backup tactic in mind if it does go tits up, basically. My own that I did, I, I got Harrogate promoted 
on my offline save. Um, and yeah, um, I've, I've set up a tactic, but after I've got promoted, and that's bad news straight away. Looked looked to switch off. So I'm just gonna hope that this works. A few people, it's not one of them off, but more importantly, yeah, I need Andrew Bridges to not be switched off. There we go. So into the game we go. Yeah, I've got a backup tactic. I've used it for Harrogate. I've played about ten games, I think, in the second div in the uh, national league, top of the league, flying. And that, that was my own tactic, which made me think, should I just go for that one? But uh, I don't think we have the players available because uh, the key positions are in the middle of the park, and I just don't think there's any players actually strong enough mentally. I think it was the, the I had players that were. Was I say that? No, there wasn't quick enough, should I say? On that save, I had Paul McKenna, if you remember him. He uh, used to play for Derby and. Not Derby, Preston and Notts Forest. Um, before. He was 38. I had him. I got Kevin Thornton. They were both very good mentally and pretty good technically, but uh, very abysm just abysmal uh, physically. But, uh, yeah. But we, we got promoted. I think it was the second to last game we got promoted. Uh, we won it out. We, I think the third to last game we did, but. Um, numerically you know goal difference we had like plus 30 on the team in second so we weren't going to lose 30 nil or something so this is a, um, a promising, promising start though five minutes in we've got 81 percent possession that's only because the keeper's been holding on to it for about five seconds long ball forward finds hunt hunt heads away on as far as mills now it's weird daily it's a dangerous player um mills now is that pablo mills is that something else no, G Mills, wherever G Mills is. Mills tries to find Weir Daly. He plays a ball in for Taylor, who blasts it wide. Is that Cleveland Taylor? I think it is. He used to play for Doncaster Rovers, I believe, years ago. I think he's about 33 now. I seem to remember him. I remember playing FIFA like 2006 or something. And I was Doncaster Rovers in the league, then League Two, or the equivalent of. And him being one of the key players coming, coming forward, coming up, up and coming. I can't even speak. What's up with you? Kircher, long kick downfield towards Mills, headed away by Blow. Now it's Phillips, one debutant to another. Atkinson now finds Brown. Alex Brown to Donovan, another new signing. Quite a few new, new signings, a bit of, a couple of loose passes as well. Nice ball down the line for Phillips. Crosses into the box, cleared away by Bennett. Another A Brown, Aaron Brown brings it down this time. Ball is played forward, Malone heads away. Now Cleveland Taylor has it on the right side, plays it inside to Aaron Brown. He's uh, dwindling a little bit on the ball here, no one's really closing down. Alex Brown comes in now to uh, dispossess, but doesn't. And Weir Dale is in behind here now, he's in behind Flynn. Gets his shot away, but it's into the side netting and wide. Clear cut chance there for Corby on the counter. So, a bit wary of the threat from Weir Daly. Cleveland tail in particular. Bridges offside. So just waiting for another uh, highlight here. The team's not doing terribly. There's no 6.10 out yet, so they can't be doing terrible. Oh, Carruthers misses his header, and Phillips is in behind now. The right hand side has a sh pop from distance, but it's a woeful effort. Woeful indeed. Blow with the throw. Finds Hunt. Nice ball to Flynn. Flynn can find Downey now. Downey in a bit of space. It's closed down by Bennett. Sealed the part. No, it's from, from the Andy quote. It's little sub steam Bennett. Oh, there you go. Bridges now brings it down superbly. Plays it wide right to Phillips now. Phillips going to run at his man Carruthers. Instead, he passes it straight to Aaron Brown, but then wins it back somehow. And now Alex Brown from find down in an advanced position. This is what I was meaning about Downey's uh, potential. Crosses in beautifully for Phillips to score at the far post. And Phillips scores on his debut. This is what I mean. Phillips there at the back post. Has he got a high anticip anticipation? No, he's got five anticipation, which is pretty poor. Great balling from Downey though. And there was Phillips at the back post. This is where he's just like a wide poacher. He comes in at the round the back late on. Arriving late, and uh, there you go. That that is a tactic showing its uh, true potential there, and it's only about a third fluid. Fluid, yeah. So doing well so far. It's a long ass video, and I apologise. 
the first one is always going to be the longest. Uh, the others after that probably won't be. We've got a couple of nervous players for some reason. Not entirely sure why. Uh, things are going well, but capable of even better. Then we'll say the midfielders here. We're going to say no pressure. Play an actual game. Because I don't want you to uh, be a schmuck and throw it all away. So everyone else is, is composed. Apart from the motivated Dieter Downey. But we'll see now. There's no point doing uh, Andrew Bridges here for me because he's already got a green look delighted. So we're going to start the second half. Everyone's fitness levels are okay. Dieter Downey at 79 is not concerning. When it gets starts to get to like 65, I think that's when it starts to worry you slightly. But when you've got a high cl uh, closing down tactic, you're going to find these problems. So Atkinson plays it wide to Phillips. Inside it goes to Tomsett. Nice ball forward to Bridges, but I think he's offside. He is. He looked offside. So, decent first half for the Nash. But still a pretty, fairly even game. As Carruthers uh, provides a cross for Mills to score from a corner. That's a bit of a disappointment, really. I haven't conceded a goal at all in the preseason from uh, any set pieces. I'm thinking, oh, that's pretty, pretty, pretty strong, this. But, uh, unfortunately... Mills making his pay. Who lost him? Atkinson. Atkinson's marking is 7. There we go. So it's 1-1 one, one here. And we are at home. So ideally we'll want to win all his home games. And try and take, make as many... Well, get as many points away from home. So we'll come up to the hour mark. And this is where I'd like to try and make a change. So we're going to go for... I think Jake Clark is going to come on for, th unfortunately, the disappointing Andrew Bridges. He's going to come on. Um, Jordan Wright or Shel Shel Shelton Payne. His work rate's not as high, though. I don't like that. His work rate's all right, though. So who do we not want here? I think we take... Do we take Thompson off? Tom City, even? He's only got seven pace. Harry Donovan's even slower at six. Whereas Jordan Wright's a little bit quicker. I'm going to go for Jordan Wright to take off Harry Donovan. Let's try that. Two subs. Still getting to grips with the team who's uh, reliable. Because, like, there's one player for Harrogate in particular, and that's uh, Turner, the right back. He's just a regular 6.8 at least, 6.9. He's just one of the best players for me in both seasons. Even though he's on his shot, he's even filled in at centre back as a covering option, and uh, you know, covering because of injury or someone's been sent off or something. And he just does it so well. He just every reliable. But this is uh, kind of concerning. We aren't creating as many chances as we were uh, in the friendlies, but obviously it's against stronger opposition. Kind of concerning. So we've got to make another change, really. Uh, I think Shelton Payne's going to have to come on for the tiring Ty Phillips, who unfortunately despite getting a goal, has dropped down to 6.9, which is usually an indication of him having a poor game, and the only reason he's playing so well is because of the goal. Like, it looks like he's playing so well. So he will have been at about 7.3, 7.4-ish, and he'll drop down, because I re ideally when players start at 6.6, .6, he'll be realistically on 6.1. So another corner comes in. It's cleared the state's claimed, sorry, this time by Hakan Burton. There's 12 minutes to go. Long ball forward towards Clark. It's not down, but here comes right now. He finds pain. Went to cause some pain for Corby as he gets away from not one but two players. He can swing this in. And Clark is there on debut to make it 2 1. Great bit of play from Payne. Making me eat my words for saying that he's not the better option between him and Phillips. He turns provider. Payne with his crossing of three. Get in Payne. Great cross. Keeper in no man's land there. I don't even know what he's doing. But nice dive in his pinky purple attire. So Dieter Downey has got 8 out of 10. He's currently the man of the match, I think. Unless one of their players has somehow got it. But yes. I'm always reluctant to uh, set it to defensive. Because I like to attack from the front. And if you put it in defensive, you're just inviting pressure. And you're more often than not, you're going to concede. I think, anyway. Eventually they're going to get, th they're going to break, th uh, break through. I'm going to say break free then. I'm going to jump into song then. It's that singing queen. I want to break free. Too late, I already did. So, 
Brown nuts it down to Atkinson. Atkinson finds Hunt. Hunt with the ball wide to paint, but Carruthers this time intercepts. Good block though from Blur. It's a loose ball from Payne. And has a chance for Reaven to, to uh, spread his legs, giggity. He has a go from distance and Hakan Burton, what is that flap? He could have just caught it, just jumped up with two hands, caught the ball and just stood. But instead it's a corner. It's headed away by Hunt though. Good defending. Salmons now. Inside it goes to Thomas who strikes it from distance and it's well wide and well high and not at all handsome. But not many chances. Corby just edging the chances. Where, uh, well, so yeah, I might as well say where edging the possession. This is going to be some test. It's a bottom team of the bottom tier that you can select manually without adding any um, <coughs> mods in. And it's going to be interesting. I mean, you know, seeing Kurz and Ashton playing the likes of Chelsea and that in uh, the Premier League, it's a long way off, uh, especially as we're still defending against Corby. Salmons now. Plays it in for Mills. It's a good bit of play from Salmons, but it's good defending in the end as Clark brings it down. The, the long ball from John. Uh, sorry, John Hunt. But look at this run from right from the attacking mid position. This is what I mean. The, it just roams around as the uh, Tricot. Tricot. I can't even say. <laughs> Tricotista. Whatever you want to call it. Matthew Flynn picks up a yellow card. You know what? I'm not going to complain. One yellow card. It's usually about ten when you when you play some of these tactics and you leave. They get stuck in on. Because I can't tackle. But that's a good win. Very good win for us. Um, it's promising. Promising to say the least. So, have a look where we are in the league. A few players made debuts. Downey made a professional debut. Um, I don't know who he left. I can't remember who we played. But he played well. Got the man of the match. So, yeah. Charlie. So, that leaves us in the competition. That leaves us eighth. So if we go to a schedule, let's have a look and see who else we can play. I think FC United is going to be a game. Definitely AFC, uh, FC United because, and I say that mainly because it's sort of a local derby, but also they come up with us last season. FC United were not in the game unless you played a mod last, on last year's Football Manager. So we're going to go into that game, I think, next. So hopefully you join us for that, and hopefully you have enjoyed this video. But until that, the next game, which is FC United. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>